Thank you for choosing Access On Demand. Access believes in continuing education and we create content to empower you to learn and grow anytime, anywhere. Let's get started. Hello and welcome from our newly expanded Access Corporate offices here in Dallas. I am Jennifer Gibson Osborne with another educational webinar for you titled Oasis D1 Transition. Today's objective is we're going to understand the use of the Oasis D versus the Oasis D1 in certain transitional instances going into PDGM. We want to make sure we ensure final claims are not rejected because the Oasis is not on file in IKEYS according to the COPs and billing regulations and this new kind of transitional circumstance that we're looking at with Oasis D1 and PDGM. And then of course we want to prevent undue workload on those skilled professionals who have to complete the start of care, the research, the resumption research in the last five days of 2019. So let's get started. The first thing we have to think about, there's some time points to consider when you're transitioning to Oasis D1. Basically, your M90 date is going to dictate if you should fill out an Oasis D or an Oasis D1 for your transfer, your resumption of care, your discharge, or your other follow-up, which we also call the SCIC. But there are some kind of strange caveats with the transition uh, with OASIS D1 and PDGM. And we're going to talk about those as we go on in the webinar. For the research and resumption of care within the five-day research window, that transition's not as straightforward because of the five-day window and the changes that are going on. And you have to factor in, of course, the episode period date. So for those scenarios, that episode start date will dictate which type of OASIS you complete rather than that M90 date, date the assessment completed. Your start of care date's also going to dictate the type of OASIS to complete in some of the circumstances as well. So what's the difference between OASIS-D and OASIS-D1? Primarily, the biggest changes are that the OASIS-D1 makes certain M items optional since they're the ones that are not going to be used to calculate uh, PDGM points anymore or PDGM payment. Um, there are several OASIS items that right now under Home Health PPS generate clinical, functional, and service utilization scores. And so since those are no longer going to come from the OASIS other than the functional, we don't need to answer those items anymore. So for that reason, beginning January the 1st, 2020, there are certain items that will be optional to uh, answer in the recertification. We have to keep in mind too that episodes that begin January 1st, 2020 or after will be paid under PDGM payment system for Medicare. Episodes that begin before January the 1st, 2020 will continue to be paid under Home Health PPS. So there's a period of about 60 days as we transition into PDGM where you will have some patients, if they're recertified, that may continue to be under Home Health PPS while you have other patients who are admitted and or recerted that have start dates after January 1st. Those would actually be paid under PDGM. Let's look at this one for example. So here, for example, we have a calendar with the start of care in 2019. If the start of care occurs in the last five days of 2019 for an initial 60-day period, use the OASIS D, okay? If the assessment is completed between 1227 and 1231, you're going to enter the actual date the assessment is completed in M90. If the assessment is completed in 2020, from this one circumstance, as we transition, you're going to enter an artificial date of 12-31-19. So in this case, for example, we have the patient started on December the 27th, 2019. We would need to do an OASIS D. And although we have a five-day window to complete the assessment, and that count begins on Saturday the 28th, that would be day one. The 29th is day two. The 30th is day three, the 31st is day four, and we actually have until January 1st to complete the OASIS assessment, gathering information to complete our assessment findings. However, in this one instance, we do not want to put M90 
with a date of 1-1-2020. We would use an artificial date of 12-31-2019. These are special guidance instructions from CMS for the uh, OASIS D and D1 transition with PDGM. All right, so if the start of care is completed on or after January the 1st, 2020, then your OASIS D1 should be completed, and then your M90 date should reflect the actual date of completion. Now let's look at recertifications. If you have a 2019 episode start date, you're doing a research. When the new episode start date is prior to January the 1st, 2020, and when we say episode start date, we mean the from and two dates on your episode. When that new episode start date is prior to January 1st, 2020, you're gonna use the Oasis D and then you're gonna use the actual completion date in M90. However, if it's a recertification with a 2020 episode start date, in other words, the from two dates, the from would be January 1st, 2020 or after. In those cases, you will use the Oasis D1 and you're going to have to use an artificial date of 1-1-2020 in M90 when that assessment is completed somewhere between the 27th and the 31st of 2019. Now, if you actually complete the Oasis on January 1st or after, in this particular scenario, you would go ahead and use the actual date, 1-1-2020 or after. And then regardless of the date that you put in here, you won't want to export these OASIS D1 OASIS until January 1st, 2020 or after. There's a difference, as you know, uh, hopefully you know, you've had to register for the new iKeys updated portal that's ready for um, PDGM. And if we try to export the OASIS D1 before January 1st, that portal is not compatible. So you'll have to actually use the artificial date, 1-1-2020, when you're completing that research somewhere between 1227 and 1231, and then you'll hold those OASIS until after January the 1st to export those. All right, so let's look at an example here. Our current episode dates are 1029 to 1227. Our new episode start date is prior to 1-1-2020. So our new from and to will be from 12-28-19 to 2-25-20. And we'll actually be paid under Home Health PPS for this particular episode because it begins before January 1st, 2020. So we have an episode date with 12-28-19 to 2-25-20. In this case, we will use an Oasis D and then we will use the actual completion date in MU90. Another example, we have a current episode date of 11-2-19 to 12-31-19. The new episode is 1-1-20 to 2-29-20. In this case, we're going to use the Oasis D1, and then we're going to use the artificial date of 1-1-2020 in M90 when that assessment is completed between 1227 and 1231. So when we use that artificial date in M90, we know we can't export that until January 1st, 2020 or after. All right, so what about those resumption researches? There are occasions when the patient will have been hospitalized and they will come out of the hospital and be ready for a resumption of care during the same five-day window that a research should happen. OASIS guidance tells us when that's the case, we'll actually do a resumption of care that will act as a research. So we're calling this resumption recertifications example. And what CMS tells us to do in these cases, if that falls between December 27th and December 31st, when that existing patient returns from a qualifying inpatient stay and the resumption of care overlaps the five-day research window and that recertification is for a 60-day episode that begins before January 1st, 2020, then we are going to complete an Oasis D resumption of care. And if the assessment is completed in 2019, we use the actual date in MU90. So if that same existing patient returns from the qualifying inpatient stay and the resumption of care overlaps the five-day research window and that recertification is for a 60-day episode that begins on or after January 1st, 2020, then in that case, we're going to be doing an OASIS D1 resumption of care 
And if the assessment is completed in 2019, we still use that 1-1-2020 artificial date in M90. All right, so let's look at some examples here. We've got a resumption research uh, where the current episode is from October 30th, 2019 to December 28th, 19, and the patient was discharged from the hospital on 12-26, and the resumption of care is done on 12-27, and our next 60-day episode dates are from 12-29 to 2-26, we know that that will be an Oasis D. We're going to get paid under Home Health PPS for this next episode, 1229 to 226. So in this case, we do an Oasis D resumption of care, which will also act as a research. We know the assessment must be completed within the 48 hours of discharge or notification of discharge. So the M90 date will actually be the date that it was completed, the actual 2019 date, okay? So you see here, you've got an end of episode on uh, 1228. The next episode starts on 1229. We do our resumption research on 1227. The date assessment completed should be, in this case, 1228-19, and that's what we would put in M90. And, of course, we're using OASIS-D. On the next resumption a research example, the patient's current episode is November the 3rd until December 31st. And that patient's discharged home from the hospital on 12:30, And our resumption of care is done on 1231. Now our next 60-day episode dates from 1120 to 22920. So in this case, because the episode start date is January 1st or after, we're going to complete the OASIS D1 resumption of care that also acts as a research. And if the assessment is completed in 2019, you're going to use an artificial date of 1120. However, if you complete it in 2020, you can use the actual date. Now that's really kind of confusing until you think about it and look at the calendar. So again, the patient's discharged from the hospital on the 30th. Our resumption research happens on December 31st, which is also the end of that 60-day period. We're going to complete our resumption of care research and the M90 date because we finished everything was there. We finished our assessment on the 31st. On M90, we would put 1120. Make sense? Because we are wanting this OASIS D1 to be exported January 1st or after, so we have to use an artificial date, okay? All right, so let's think about the other OASIS types and transitions. All the other OASIS types, a transfer, a significant change in condition that we also know as the other follow-up type OASIS, or a discharge, depend on the M90 date to determine which type of OASIS is to be completed. So if you're doing a transfer, an other follow-up or skick, or a discharge, Depending on that M90 date, that's going to dictate which type of OASIS you use. So if you're completing a transfer OASIS on December 31st, 2019, then your M90 date would be December 31st, 2019, and you're going to use an OASIS D. If you're doing a discharge on January 1st or after, you must use an OASIS D1, for example. All right, so I've added here just a quick little resource for you. It's a research table to kind of help you understand uh, your episode start date. If it's 1029 to 1227, your next episode start date is 1228. Your assessment date would be 1227 at the latest. Your M90 date would need to be 1227. And then your OASIS D is the type of OASIS that you use. And you can go down this little table and to help you determine which OASIS you would need to do. For example, if you look at the fourth one from the bottom, you have an episode start date of 11-2 to 1231. Your next episode starts 1120. Your assessment date could happen somewhere between 1227 and 1231, but your M90 date would need to be January 1st, 2020, because that's when the next episode starts. You're going to get paid in PDGM for this episode, so you need to do a PDGM-compliant OASIS, and that would be the OASIS D1, okay? All right, and last, you have a resource here from one of the uh, OASIS 
special announcements on CMS's website that tells you the same information in a quick little resource uh, box table type thing that you can print out if you needed to and put on your clipboard or near your computer if you needed to. Lastly, you've got some uh, websites here where I got the information for the webinar today. And uh, if you should need to read it in full, you'll know where to go and get that. So thank you again for joining us for this Oasis D1 transition uh, webinar. I hope that you've had some good information provided to you. And we will talk with you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining our on-demand training today. Access is the only home health care technology company approved by the American Nurses Credentialing Center to offer continuing education credits and the most recommended home health software on software advice. You can watch more on-demand training videos through our industry-leading help center or at access.com where you'll find tutorials, blogs, white papers, and answers to frequently asked questions. Access. Empowering care anytime, anywhere.